Proverbs chapter 28, verse 19. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, plain and simple. Work produces fruit. But he that follows after vain persons shall have poverty enough. I mean, if you're going with the in crowd, you're entertaining yourself, you're not doing nothing for fruit. Matter of fact, you're probably spending up your money. You're probably wasting your resources. A faithful man shall abound with blessing. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Haste, gambling. Squandering people, deceit, and not be innocent. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they believe got away. They've died and gone into a hole in the ground and, well, nothing ever happened to them. But they don't realize <coughs> it's a point on demand once to die, but after this, the judgment. We don't know whatever happened to Jimmy Hoffa, whatever came of him. I guarantee before God all will be known. His death and, and where he is. He, God knows where he is. What happened to Amelia Earnhardt? No one knows. God does. You say, well, why do you mention these people with this verse? It's to realize that Everything in, in life, Proverbs says in 15.3, Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. You know, you may have somebody in your church that looks, smells, and touches right. And in his private life, he may not be innocent. You know, the lust of the eyes is one of those things that are as the three weapons Satan uses. Faithful man. How can you see a faithful man? By his works. Yeah, James says faith without works. It's true. But there's also another part of a man that you can't see, really. And it's called his character. Our characters will be judged. Our faith will be judged. You say, well, what about an atheist that doesn't have faith? He doesn't have faith in God, but he has a faith enough that when he turns his car key, that his motorcycle or his car or his truck is going to start. You have faith enough where if you drive up to one of those drive boxes and say, I want a hamburger, fries, and, and, a, and a, a milkshake. you got enough faith that when you go where you're going to go and you open that bag, you're not going to have chicken and, and onion rings and a, a soda pop. Or have the hamburger and no fries. See, we are living in a world of faith. Even though I don't believe in God. You sit in a light with faith that that light is going to turn green. So a faithful man shall abound in blessings. So everyone that has faith, only in God. There are people that have faith in the Antichrist right now. As much as we have faith in the blessed hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. They want a world, one world government. They want the mark. They want to be under Satan's rule. Are they going to get blessings? Have you read the book of Revelation? Would you call that a blessing? So this verse also shows us that there's a, a, a white side and a black side. A good side and an evil side. Those who worship Satan have faith.
and those that haste themselves to be rich, they're not going to wait on God. God may not want them to be rich. Gambling and deceiving, that's not ways of doing it. All right, you won the one million dollar jackpot. You accidentally put that dollar in and, and, and came out a winner, okay? And yeah, you tied and, and you, you know. But if you get something that God never wanted you to get, poverty. If you haste yourself to get into a ministry that God doesn't want you to have yet, and you cut corners and, and, and you swindled your way and you device with the devil and, and you compromise with world and all that, you lose a heavenly reward. It comes down to faith and patience. But he that maketh haste and rich shall not be innocent. These two verses rest upon poverty and guilty. Listen, you can be homeless and underneath a bridge and be blessed by God. Elijah sat out in, in, in a wilderness somewhere by a river bank. Where the food was brought to him by carrier raven. Paul lived his life with a jail ministry, being broken, being bruised, being sore. And yet God had given him someone to be chained to that would listen to the gospel. To have respect of persons is not good. You're not to be a brown noser. You're not to be the pastor's pet. You know, he's the pastor of the church and, and you know, no. Well, look at that guy, oh, he's rich and all that, no. You don't get their posters and their trading cards. For a piece of bread, that man, the one that you have respect of, will transgress. Now, there's a quite possibility in the future of America. For a piece of bread, someone may kill somebody because that may be the last piece of bread. Listen, if they'll fight over a TV set or electronic goo, goo gad on Black Friday, what do you think they're going to do for a piece of bread that they're starving for? You know that one of those horses in the apocalypse, they, say, they call it apocalypse, one of them brings famine. Now, whether America be America or what, there is going to be a worldwide famine. The only one that's going to have the food is going to be the Antichrist. And they said uh, measure for a penny or something like that. A year's wage. I'll take that back. A day's wage. A penny. When the man hired them out for the day, they gave them a penny. Your daily wage going for food. You won't have time for your electronic gizmos. That person that you put on a pedestal. What's going on with all our sports figures today? They're involved with illegal and legal drugs that are illegal to the to the uh, corporation or the or the what would you call it group that they belong to. 
the main organization that, that runs that particular sport says, hey, all right, you know, we know marijuana and all that's wrong, but we got some other drugs that, listen, you're not to be involved in. And then get right there involved. What's wrong with the actors and actresses and, and singers and uh, everyone puts praise on to? There's somebody right now, I mean, he made a lot of movies and, and he's done a lot of things and now he's got to auction it all off because he ain't got no money. What would that guy do in order if, I mean, he actually had no money, to, he, got, he had to commit a crime for food? What would he do? They are humans. All have sinned and come to show the glory of God. There were women that uh, Jeremiah spoke in Lamentations that the famine got so bad they would eat their babies. Solomon even witnessed that. No, not Solomon. He witnessed the two, the two women, one overslept a bit. But there was a king in Israel or Judah. We boiled my son today and we ate him. And I went to go you know, boil her son yes, tomorrow and she hid her son. I think maybe Ahab. I could be wrong on that. How much would it take for a woman to take her baby and boil it and eat it? A long while ago when we were kids, there was an airplane crash somewhere and they only found a couple of survivors. And they said, well, how'd you guys survive in this wilderness and all that? They ate all the people that didn't survive. And when you read about accounts of POW camps in, in Vietnamese areas and all that, and Asian, what some of our soldiers had to go through, I mean, I wouldn't drink that. I wouldn't eat that. You read those stories? That's the only thing you have besides death. You know what your greatest hope and blessed hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, if if you're on a raft with a few buddies and you're saved, and you've been out many days, if not weeks, or months, if you decide to survive that much, and you got Jesus Christ as your blessed hope, and the only way to keep living is eating someone's blood or even the one that just died. And wouldn't it be just to say, listen, guys, you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And I'll tell you what, if you need to save, and if you were to die right now, you'd go into hell. Why don't you just kill me and eat me? Because I'm going to die and go to heaven. If you were to die right now, you guys would go off into hell. We're not talking about money. We're not talking about gold. We're not talking about fame. We're talking about it for a piece of bread. We're going to, in a few chapters, chapter 30, one of the prayers of this guy is, listen, Lord, don't let me be so poor that i got to steal bread, because then in your eyes I become a thief. Thou shalt not steal. It's one of the big ten. And yet in the law it says if he steals because you know he has need of bread. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the Lord is great. Oh. Before Phil Lorado, I apologize for saying his name, El Guardia, Name of the airport became a popular mayor in New York City in 1933. He was a judge. One day, he presided over the case of a poor man who had stolen a loaf of bread to feed his family. Recognizing that 
By the law, the man must be fined ten dollars. LaGuardia paid the fine himself. Then find everyone in the courtroom 50 cents for living in a town where a man has to steal bread in order to eat. The judge had to bail him collect the fines and give them to the poor thief. A man will steal in order to eat. You know where America's going to? Do you know what's going on in America today right now? People are stealing bread from taxpayers and not working. And you will stand before God lost or saved, judgment seat of Christ or the great right throne judgment, and you will be accounted as a thief. He that hastes to be rich, he that hastes to be rich, hath an evil eye. That's a bold statement. And considers not that poverty shall come upon him. Well, there's a big guy who grew up and had all the money and all that. And yeah, but what about in hell? Bare naked as a worm. Everything he everything he accumulated in his life is not his no more. I don't care. Look how rich the pharaohs of Egypt were. Do you realize when a pharaoh died, if you were his servant, you were buried with him? The cat was mummified. The dog was mummified. All his entire housing went into that tomb. Let me ask you a question. Is Pharaoh enjoying his stuff in all the all the museums in all the world? He's in poverty, in hell, burning. Gambling and the corporate ladder is not nothing for the Bible, for a Christian. If God wants you to be rich, and it's not a sin to be rich, he'll give you the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. For his honor and pleasure. But the love of money is the sin, Paul tells Timothy. And when you get that love, it, it it's not enough. This poor guy in New York stole bread just so he can feed his family. He didn't steal uh, video games and, and cell phones like they're doing in Missouri and New York and uh, L.A. The gain to be rich, to be rich, is wrong. Because you'll never be satisfied. Last time, one of the guys I was talking to, we got the machines, now you go. I, I can't believe there are lottery tickets that are, are $20. And for $20, I better win something. And I fell in, into the same thing as this guy. He'd go buy his tickets, scratch them off, and... Hey, won three dollars, and you go buy three more tickets, and you, you lose, and you lose all your money. 
And that's what's going on right now in Las Vegas and Atlantic City and the other casinos of the world. I won five bucks. I had to pay 20 to get it. And there are people out now out there right now probably thinking about how they can cheat the system. There are people sitting at a board table right now probably at a meeting how we can swindle our customers and our employees so we can get more money. And they don't know that a judge will stand in front of them while they give an account to their actions. They think people don't know. Then people may not know, but my God in the Bible may know. Now, he that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flies with the tongue. When somebody does something wrong and you rebuke them for the right motive, it's better than, you know, you just talk nice to them. They're not so bad. It's a product of, of their environment, of their growing up so bad. No, 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 no. When you name the guy's sin and tell him what he's guilty of, when you stand and tell him there's a hell and they are a sinner, unless their sins are washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go into hell. A lot better than just say this prayer and now you, and you you're so far safe, and then, you know, they wake up eternity in hell thinking that they were saved. Better to, to put it out forward about hell, sin, and Jesus, and have them reject it, than have them a bunch of sugar-coated junk, and thinking, hey, I'll say this prayer, okay, and thinking they are saved, and then stand before Jesus, well, Jesus, didn't I say this prayer? Yeah, but it wasn't good enough. Saul said a prayer, Pharaoh said a prayer, Judas said a prayer, so what? They're going to go in hell too. Your sugar-coated messages ain't going to do you no good. You will stand on the wrong side of God. When those Pharisees came to John the Baptist, man, he called them out who they were. When Jesus met with those Pharisees, you hypocrites, you scribes, you snakes, and he let them out have it who they were. Flyery is damnation. Whoso robbeth his father or his mother and saith, It is no transgression. The same is a companion of a destroyer, Matthew 15, verse 4. It was Corbin. You know what Apollyon means? Abaddon? When those names show up in Revelation? You know who went through Egypt and went through the doors where there was no blood and killed the firstborn? The destroyer. A destroyer is not somebody you want to have as a companion. You mention him likened to a tornado. And if you robbed your parents, you need to get it right. And you need to get it right right now. I did. I wrote my father a letter and told him I, I am a Christian. I am sorry. If he were to tell me how much money I stole from him, I will some way and somehow pay it back to him. You know, you can steal from your mom and your father by taking things in the refrigerator or on the stove or the tabletop or the countertop that's not yours 
and you are just as much as a thief, and you are a companion with a destroyer? A little extra scoop of pumpkin. A little extra taste of uh, cereal. Candy. It don't have to be money. The Bible says, my children, you are a companion of a destroyer for thieving. Thou shalt not steal. He that is of a proud heart Chapter 13, verse 10. Stirreth up strife. Well, how can he do that? Because his pride is going to come into the conversation, into the gathering, and it's going to, you know, he's the one that swell up. And, he, you know, if you're not talking about him, you ain't lifting up what he believes. If you're not doing anything apart what he thinks. You know what I mean? You get a conversation, if it's against this guy's proud heart, he's going to fight. I mean, I used to do this growing up with my grandparents and my brother. They were New York Yankee fans all the way. So I come in and say, well, I'm a Boston Red Sox fan. And ooh-wee, up comes the pride of the teams. And I didn't care about baseball. That's a great il illustration. You're having a conversation with somebody, and that person comes in, butts in about something they did. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Now, that's not just fat, you know, the big tummy and a big rear. That's blessings. Mercy, grace, crown. I mean, it wouldn't really be fat as far as uh, the flesh because the fatter you get, the worse you are, the worse healthy you are. Do you think God's going to make you fat around the midsection so you can have a coronary? I don't think so. And there, there's a few fat men mentioned in the Bible, and they were really on, on the Lord's side. Eli the priest was a fat man, the Bible records. Ehud went up to one of the uh, religious rulers who was a fat man, and he died. He was so fat, Ehud took the, the, the dagger and stuck it in, and the flat clothes around the dagger. He couldn't get his dagger back. I don't know if anybody else has mentioned fat. I think it's a blessing. I don't think God would make you fat so you can be unhealthy. You do that yourself. Listen, all the fat I got is myself, not God. Well, you know, you say, well, God bless me because that's, you know, all the... Yeah, God can bless you if you eat healthy, too. If I would have ate healthy and done right and, and my body and all that, I'd probably be a lot better use of the Lord today. I mean, my fast because I spent my money on the wrong thing. Sugar. I'll admit it. It's a sin. Gluttony is a sin. I'll admit it. I'll be the first one. That's not a sin that I, ought, that I put to the Lord too often. I should have. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm fat with the mercies of the Lord. You know, what? what is the blessings of the Lord described by Paul through the Galatians? The fruit of the Spirit. A tree that produces nine fruit. Boy, you can be fat on those juices. You know, you can take the fruit and make it, you can make like a, a, a kind of applesauce kind of thing and then have a kind of a cider, a, a juice. And still have the, the, the pulp to eat if you're into that kind of stuff. 
Imagine sitting down and having the, the juices of the, of the Holy Spirit and then to have the pulp of the Holy Spirit. That's a meal. He that trusts his own heart is a fool. So what do they tell you? You know, let your heart rule your way. Let your heart speak. Listen to your inner self. Go find yourself. And the Bible says you are a fool. And I'm looking for the reference I have here. Job 29.10 or 16. Luke 4.18 and Matthew 11.5. Jeremiah says the heart is wicked above all things. But whoso walketh wisely... Psalm 14, 1, 53, 1. He shall be delivered. Also, if you walk in your own heart, you're not going to be delivered. But if you walk wisely, you'll be delivered. So it sounds like this. If you walk in your heart, it sounds like trouble's coming. A trap or a snare. Why would you need to be delivered? You know... In your best state, you're you're in your wickedness. You know your your body itself does not want to follow God. It is the spirit that listens to the message, and it is the flesh that's looking at the clock. Why can you sit down for a two-hour movie at ease and at her great? But a 45 minute message and he goes 46 minutes. And, uh, he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. Again, we are in the Old Testament under the law. The blessings are if you obey the law, you'll be blessed. As far as the church age, you properly give to the Lord, to the poor. Now, we laid out guidelines. We laid it out before. It gets written down as far as, as your work for your faith. If you give it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's written down. And it will appear at the judgment seat of Christ. And if it's done for good, for gold, silver, or precious stone, it will remain. But if you give to the poor so you can put it online, such and such in the 1040, wood, hay, or stubble. Now you go up to somebody and they want money again. I'm going to say it again. How do you do it? Well, I, want, I need something to eat. Can you give me a few bucks? Sure, I'll take you right over to this restaurant. Order anything you want. I'll get you a, a burger, or a, a side dish, fries, and a, and a soda. Well, no, 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 I don't want. No, then you're not going to get it. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll take a hamburger and that. A, a small hamburger, right? No, no. You know what? May I get you next size up? May I supersize it? Well, but I'm going to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and this is a gospel track, and. It's between you and the Lord to read this gospel tract. I'll get it for you. And God looks down from heaven and sees that and records it. And then what? God sees you're a faithful, ungrudgingly giver in the name of his son. It's going to show up at the judgment seat of Christ as gold, silver, precious stone. It's not going to burn when it's tried. Now, I believe if you put a line for whatever in IRS, okay, he just puts a line through it and it turns into wood, hay, or stubble. That's what I believe. But either or case. If it remains, God's not going to give you a table full of food because you gave him a hamburger. 
You know, you're not going to give unto the Lord ten bucks. He's going to give you ten thousand. That's not the case. Your reward as a born again Christian for doing right may be not here. It just may be at the judgment seat of Christ. It's far better to be there than get a temporal here. But he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. Now, what is hiding his eyes? How many people in Capitol Hill preach about the poor, and how many of them ever been down to where the poor are? Do they even know where the poor are? You know, in Washington D.C., there is a underground railroad system for the. Uh, I almost said son of my spot. For the senators and the House of Representatives and all that. They don't even walk the streets where the people are. They got their own little private transit system. So what's the chances of them seeing a, a man on the street with no arms or no legs and holding on a cup that I fought in Afghanistan. Please spare a nickel. Well, Senator such and such is serving turkey down here at the food mission. Is it, so, is it really a food mission, or is it just a place set up? And you know, for all the people that go into that food mission, if that that politician is there, you know they got a security force, and they only allow certain people in, and so many number can go in. The president of the United States is, is meeting with the soldiers. Having to, you think that the Secret Service will let every single soldier in? See, you, you can't buy into the media black, blackout. Is it real what they're reporting? I'm the famous actress here. and For a cup of coffee every day, you can feed these people. See this little girl over here. Has that actress or actor ever been in the country they're representing? Or is it is some film stage in, in California? And a girl or a little boy with makeup? Don't lose that fly. We need him for the next movie. You know, Paul met with poor. <laughs> he was down in the dungeons with him. Jeremiah met with the Paul. He was down the uh, the poor. He was down in the prisons with him. David said his army was the outcast, the poor, the rejected. So he slept with the poor and all that. David called up a poor man out of uh, David's son there, Lodi Bar. But see, this day and age, there's such swindling, you got to make sure that person's poor. There's been cameras following them over, and they get into a Cadillac or Lexus or whatever nice car is today, luxury car. But if you hide your eyes, doesn't, say, doesn't Hebrew say whereby you've entertained angels unaware? How do you know if you don't run into somebody who's, who, I mean, listen, I'll go, yeah, I'll, I'll take a meal. And the guy's humble enough, listen, just fries. No, no, I'll get you a hamburger. Really? A hamburger, too? And you do, and you give him a gospel track, and you may have a little prayer with him, and you, you go off? How do you know that guy just doesn't, doesn't disappear? Because where is it saying in the New Testament the angels can't show up? And that angel appears before God. Uh, angel... Rabbi Haba. I don't know. What do you got to report? And I said, I went down there to that, that Christian Lord uh, and told him my story like you told me to do. And Lord, he, he wouldn't give me the money outright. Oh, really? No, he wouldn't. Okay. But he took me in this make 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 something. 
and he gave me a hamburger. And he said, no, I'll just have those little white things sticking out in the thing. I'll just have, he said, no, no, I'll give you a hamburger. And he supersized it for me. You know, angels don't really know what the junk we have down here. And he supersized it for me, and he gave me this piece of paper, and it says Jesus Christ on it, and has the Word of God in it. I don't know what it means to be saved, Lord, but he gave me this paper and told me I need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I didn't, I didn't blow my cover, God. He didn't know I was an angel. I didn't have wings. And he gave it to me in your precious son's name, Jesus Christ. I gotta say one thing. That that was a good meal. I I waited. Early. I wanted to eat that. That was good. But I I appear before you, God the Father, to tell you that's how that person did to me. Some people entertain angels unaware. How do you know that angel that person if, if he's God's angel? How do you know he doesn't go up to God and say like Satan goes up to God and angel says this is exactly what happened. Well, I better have an uh, angel Bobby the Wolf, whatever his name is. Now he has a name for. So I sent you down. What happened? I never found him. See, like everywhere I was, you know, you see people do this. They'll go all the way around not to get that piece of paper. Well, that guy went all the way around to go by, go past me. I never did meet with him, Lord. I'm sorry. No, Angel, you didn't fail. He failed. Be nice to them, but don't just freely hand, hand money out to them now. In this day and age. When the wicked rise, uh-oh, the wicked, remember that? We did a whole study on that last time. Men hide themselves, 28-12, 29-2. But when they perish, the righteous increase. You know, it's when you look at this verse, do you not see the tribulation in the second advent, of the Lord Jesus Christ? When the wicked finally sits in abominations, desolation, spoken about Jesus and Daniel the prophet, what happens to the Jews? They're going to run and hide in Salipetra. But when they perish, the prophet and the false beef are, are cast in the lake of hell, and Satan is, is chained for a thousand years, the righteous in the millennium increase. Chapter 28 is this full of the tribulation in the millennium in the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's so much in here about rich. It will be impossible for a rich man to be saved in the tribulation period. Study James. Because in order to be rich again, he's got to receive the mark. And for a piece of bread, that man will transgress. What is the transgression of the tribulation period to get food? The mark. And he that hastens to be rich has an evil eye. Well, what's the, what's the eye called in the middle of the forehead? 666. Six, six. You know, the, the, the third eye? Cyclops? And consider that not the poverty shall come to him. When Jesus Christ comes it, I mean, the whole earth has changed. They're throwing their idols and, and gods into the caves with the bats. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor. 
Imagine Jesus Christ coming to the sale of pizza where the Jews are and saying, I'm the Messiah. You've gone through the Jacob's trouble, the seven year uh, Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. You missed out there in the church age because you rejected me. A lot better than one that uses the flattery called Satan, the Antichrist. Comes in with peace. All the world wants peace. Whosoever robbers his father or his mother, saying no transgression, the same as the companion, the destroyer, the polyon, the baden. They will sell their parents out to the Antichrist. See, we're back in the tribulation period. He that is proud of heart stirs up strife. Guess who's proud? Guess who's pride? The Antichrist. But he that puts his trust in the Lord shall be made fat, the 144,000, and those that they go witnessing to. And there the fat is where they go down to sell the pizza, and God's going to feed them with the manna in the wilderness all over again. Okay, that point there, there is fat put on the bones. There is where... It's not fat as in obese. That's fat because that's the only food they get. The only thing they'll have to go out and gather it by death, which would be the shadow of death, whatever that is. The only way they're going to survive by food is what God gives them. Okay, there's the fat. He that trusts in his own heart is a fool, you know, oh, yes, mighty Antichrist, yes, you're the one. Oh, I don't know you're an Antichrist, but, oh, yeah, my heart just takes that mark. I'll be great. All right, here I am. I got a job, and I got, yeah, 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 yeah. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered, delivered from who? The Antichrist. Look at, look at, looky, looky, looky where this is going now. And he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. What is the reference here? And the name, whereas I was in prison, you you visited me. Where I was hungry, you gave me food. I was sick, you you came to take care of me. Lord, when was you in prison? We came to see you. When were you sick that we took care of? When you done it unto the least of these, my brethren, the Jews, who do not receive the mark, will not have food. And depend on those who do help the poor, the Jews, who will not receive the mark, who will have no food. You will not lack. You will be able to have the ability that no one else will have in the tribulation period. If you take care of those Jews, you will be able to go right into the millennium. The judgment of nations. You will be considered a sheep and not a goat. Wow, now don't we see these verses coming out? This is all been about the tribulation, about the Antichrist and the Jews. But he that hides his eyes shall have many a curse. What is the many a curse? Depart from me, you, you wicked, or I forget what he said, into the lake of fire. Because you did not take care of my brethren. You did not visit them. You did not feed them. And when the wicked rise, oh, we already talked about him. Men hide themselves, we already talked about them. But when they perish, the righteous increase. Look at that. It's a continuation about the Antichrist. Prophecy of Jesus Christ and his first advent was 100%. Everything we read from verse 15 to 28. Now, there's got to be something in 28 because look, 28, 28. Remember I told you 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6? 13 is rebellion. Proverbs 28, 15 to 28 is prophecy that had not happened yet. And if Jesus fulfilled all the first Advent prophecies before he died on that cross, and when he said it was finished, that everything was concluded for his first Advent, you better believe that all these are going to happen. You don't need a newspaper. They're going to be poor Jews. They're going to cry out for help. And people are going to help them. And they're going to be poor Jews crying out for help. And they're going to be people not going to help them. 
and people will transgress by receiving a mark just to be fed. And they'll even sell out their parents. And he'll be likened to a lion and a bear and a wicked ruler over the poor people. He that tills his bread will have plenty of bread. I think there was a man in the Bible that was tilling some wheat in secret, Gideon. I don't know about that one, but we've been studying the Antichrist. 